It's family and football with Marshall as the head coach of the Thundering Herd, Charles Huff, hops on Locked On Sunbelt. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Dave Schultz back with Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. We start our previews of the upcoming season. I want to try to get a lot of the coaches on before camp starts. That's going to not be easy to do as camp is starting on Wednesday. So we have uh, Marshall's Thundering Herd head coach, uh, Charles Huff, today. We got uh, Ricky Ronnie from ODU hopping on. And we have Mike Desimo uh, later on in the week uh, as well. And uh, Others have already reached out to me. I can follow up with the SIDs to make it convenient for them because we want them to be on the show. All right, with Marshall's Thundering Herd, Charles Huff, uh, him and his family are growing. They're actually having a uh, another child at the end of camp right before expected uh, the week of the first ball game, and he gives kudos to his lovely wife, uh, uh, Jessica Huff. Uh, she's all over social media, so you can't miss her. Uh, but it is an interesting family planning to have a child at that point in time. Uh, but he talks about it, and he talks about Marshall being family uh, as well a little bit later on uh, in the podcast. The big thing is going with Cam Fancher at quarterback. All right, that has been – I don't know if it's been settled, but we're certainly starting at that point, that's for sure. Uh, and then we throw a little bit of a curveball because he's had some outstanding running backs. Saquon Barkley at Penn State, Najee Harris at – uh, Najee Harris at Alabama or Rasheen Ali that he's had at Marshall. Uh, and he gives an in-depth uh, choice when he picks one. He actually picks one, which is a little bit surprising uh, and why he does. He also talks about, because I've been doing this a long time. Uh, he's been doing this a long time, but he's only been head coach for a few years. Does he still get excited on day one? So lots to talk about with the head coach of the Marshall Thundering Herd. He is Charles Huff on Locked on Sundown. Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. We are honored and privileged to have our next guest on. He is the head coach of the Marshall Thundering Herd. Uh, he is Charles Huff. I'm thinking about naming this episode. It's got to be fatherhood and football and how to combine the two because that, that's what you're about to do. Uh, you're not only getting ready for the season, coach, but you got another Huff on the way. Yeah, um, we do. Uh, obviously, you know, a blessing anytime you, you're able to add to your family. Uh, my wife has been a rock star and she understands and manages the, the home, uh, which allows me to be as effective as I can be here, um, you know, at the office and with the team. Um, obviously, the, the football family life is different than, than most. Um, but as, as I tell, you know, our family, our family's dynamic is our family's dynamic. And we celebrate the times that we have together and, and understand that this is part of the journey. Um, we are a you know sports family, and sometimes that means we don't get to do the things that traditional families may do, but traditional families don't get to think do the things that we get to do. So we enjoy it. Uh, we're excited uh, to be adding another. And, and again, my wife has done a phenomenal job of uh, managing this whole deal um, as well. Yeah, Jessica Huff, she is a prolific tweeter or exer of whatever we're calling it these days. That's how I know. I, I you know, because uh, you're not putting it out there. She is. Uh, yeah, trust me, we're, we're, we're totally different in those lanes. She, she's she's sure. more of, um, you know, let everybody know how you know how blessed we are. I'm more of the less people know, the the less they can you know dive into our business, and nobody tries to steal our signals or anything like that. I'm probably a little more. Um, Coach Saban eyes, you know, keep it a secret right. so no one steals, you know, steals anything from us. But um, she does that great. Uh, I would have to ask you because I, I probably this happens way too often. You do have a few kids already. What happens when your kids are more mature than your football players? Does that ever happen? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it reminds me that it doesn't matter if they're 11 year old, old or 19 year old. They still make, right. you know, bonehead decisions right. and some of the things that they do make you scratch your head as an adult, but it does help me, um, you know, understand, you know, I, I've become a better communicator because of, you know, your kids and um, I've become more, um, 
open to listen and teaching rather than just kind of scolding and demanding. Um, so I think it's helped me become a better coach. Um, it, it's helped me manage the staff a little bit better, you know, just because, you know, staffs have families and things come up and it's not always a perfect world for everyone to do things the same way. Um, so it, it definitely, you know, uh, made me a better coach. Um, I'm probably not as good of a father. I tell my wife all the time, if, if I was good of a father as I was a coach, we'd be great. But um, that's where she comes in to kind of balance me out and it really helps. We're talking to Coach Charles Huff, Marshall Thundering Herd. All right, I've asked this question to a lot of people over the last few weeks. What did you know about the Marshall program before you got there, and what have you found out about it since? Well, I think, you know, the the, the same thing I knew is the same thing I found out. It's a very passionate fan base. There's a lot of pride here. There's a lot of history and tradition. Um, you know, from being from afar, you know, you always recognize the brand, the logo, um, some of the great memories. Um, and then when you get here, you realize it's a passionate fan base. There's a lot of pride. There's a lot of history and tradition. Um, for some, that may create um, unrealistic expectations. Um, but for me, a person who's process driven, um, it just shows that there are people that care. And you'd rather be in a situation where you have a lot of people that care um, and a lot of people that want to see you do well. It's not always um, voiced or explained or um, ex example the right way, but um, you, you do, you do know there's a lot of history and tradition, a lot of passion, you know, you got a fan base that has seen success in the past. Um, you got a fan base who is, um, very rich in tradition and history. Um, and you've got a fan base who, who, who loves their, their, their football team. Um, and that's a positive, you know, you, you've been, I've been places where the school's in the middle of so much that you don't even know that it's there. Um, and you know, whether you win or lose, it's, a decision, do I go to a concert or another sporting event or something else rather than go to the game? You know, here in Huntington on Saturday afternoons, this is a place to be, you know. So um, it's it's a positive, you know, same thing I knew coming in. But when you get here, you get a better understanding. Are you trying to tell me you haven't been able? Well, you found a Pennington. Now you got to find Randy Moss. I mean, why? why yeah, can't you find I, mean, I don't Randy know. Moss? If, <laughs> I don't know if the, another one is out there, but if he's out there, so. you, you got a, you got a scholarship offer from Marshall right away. So. Um, but I think, again, that just goes to show, you know, when you have generational talents in a program, um, you know, people remember those things. You know, obviously, you know, those type of players don't come around, you know, repeatedly. But what it does is it creates a little bit of um, kind of a stronghold on the college football game. You know, people will always remember, you know, Randy Moss and the impact that he had on, you know, the college football game. You know, there's very few players that have had that type of, you know, lasting impact on the entire sport. Um, and he's one of them, and he happens to be, you know, a son of Marshall. Talking to Coach Charles Huff, Marshall Thundering Herd, the Lockdown Sun Belt, your team every day. All right, let's talk about the quarterback. Uh, usually, you know, coaches, when there may or may not be a battle, uh, do not bring their quarterback to Sun Belt Media Days. You did not shy away from that. Uh, you brought Cam Fancher. So apparently heading, at least heading into camp, he is the starting quarterback. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, it's, it's coach speak when you when you say, oh, well, we don't have a quarterback. And I think it's probably a little misleading to your team. Um, you know, right now, Cam has the most playing experience at that position. He's had the most success at that position. Um, but he understands just like every other player in our program understands if he doesn't improve and someone outperforms him, he won't play. Um, you know, last year we took Rasheen Ali and we didn't have a starting running back, backup running back, you know, controversy. You know, at the point in time, Rasheen was the most experienced player we had with the most success. Um, you know, circumstances happened. He got hurt. Kalen LeBorn came in and became yeah. the best player. And I think when you when you when you're very clear and black and white with the players, there's no gray and there's no, well, who's our starting quarterback? And I think it's important. Um, to, to have a person that is labeled the quarterback on your team, because that's leadership, that's direction, that's guidance. And what happens is when you've established a quarterback, whether that's Henry Columbia from last year, whether that's Cam Fancher this year, whether that's Cole Pennington, when you establish that, it's very easy for the players in the organization to see why that player is playing. And then if you have to make a change, why that player is no longer playing but when you get into the battles of we don't know yet um you're, you're going to split the team because there's they, they got friends you, you, there's going to be guys that think you know hey this guy should be playing there's going to be guys that think this guy should be playing 
But when you make it clearly about production, when you make it clearly about consistency, the friends even say, yeah, I mean, Cam, Cam's doing pretty good. <laughs> now, could we make the same argument if Cam was one in five as a starter? I don't know. Um, you know, but it's hard to deny the production that he's had. It's hard to deny the leadership that he's shown. Does that mean that, you know, for the rest of the year, I, I've never been a part of, and, and this is probably not a good thing. I've never been a part of a football season in my 20 years of coaching where the starter played ever started every game um, right. for whatever reason, whether that's injury, whether that's, he got outplayed, whether that's, you know, Hey, another player stepped up. Um, so, and we tell our guys that, um, but I, I do think it's hard to, say you don't have a battle when no other quarterback in the room has Marshall playing experience. That's, that's tough. Um, but that doesn't mean that, Hey, we, if we don't play Henry Columbia at the start of last year, I don't know if we beat Notre Dame. I don't know if Cam Fancher was ready at that point in the right. season to beat Notre Dame. Um, but when he was ready, he came in and he's five and one as a starter. So you can make that same argument for Cole. You can make that same argument for Chase and the rest of the quarterbacks. When they're ready to come in, hopefully Coach Huff and the staff have done a good job of preparing them to come in and be successful. So how much of it is that easier for you? You know, the Raging Cajuns are going through the same thing. Ben Waldridge was cleared. Apparently he's going to be the guy. Uh, we'll see how much he comes back from his uh, injury. How much easier is it for you and the team and the coaches knowing, all right, this is the direction we're going in now. Having said what you just said, it could change, right? Life is all about making the adjustments, but now you don't have to deal with idiots like me or Luke Creasy or the Thundering Herd podcast, you know, the Thundercast asking you who the starting quarterback is, how's the competition going? That's something off of your plate right now. And also, can you concentrate on the other positions that, you know, you may be more concerned about? Well, yeah, I think I think it helps. I think it helps the quarterbacks. I think it helps the quarterbacks when they right. know where they are and they know right. what needs to be done from both spots. Right. Cam knows what he needs to do to continue to be the starting quarterback. The other guys know what they need to do to become the starting quarterback. When there is kind of a, a gray area, you, you kind of get into the well, you know, I was I did good today or I did good this week. Um, you know, I mean, I should be the guy, you know, well, not only do you have to do well you've got to do better than the guy in front of you. And I think it helps. Also, I think it helps the team because now you can start to really get some continuity with your quote unquote ones or your quote unquote, you know, first group or first couple of guys. Um, and what will start to happen is the other players, the other backups will start to see, okay, Hey, this is what I need to do to play on the ones level, or this is what I need to do, or this is the person I need to, to pass, you know, for, for us, right? We know what teams in this conference that have been better than us, you know, historically. So we know what teams do we have to continue to build and close the gap towards. Not necessarily every team's not important, but there are certain teams that have had all success. So from a recruiting standpoint, from a um, playing standpoint, from a branding standpoint, all those things, like, you know, when we were at Alabama, we were at the top of the mountain. So we were the mountain. We were the, you know, the, the mountain everyone was trying to catch. So we had to keep trying to stay away from the competition. Well, here we're in a situation where we have a mountain to climb, you know. So when the players are kind of positioned, it helps them um, concentrate on improvement instead of, am I a starter today? Are you a starter? Um, right. And then it, it makes it easier on you guys that you, you asked the question anyway, but I've already got the answer. So I don't have to think about you know, <laughs> right. what I, what I said. All right, let's take a time out. When we come back, Coach Huff will tell us about the spots that will be filled during camp compared to Cam Fancher already heading into camp as the leading candidate to fill that spot. Let me tell you a little bit about eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around, just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay, guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply.
All right, Dave Schultz back on a Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Let's get back to Coach Charles Huff of the Marshall Thundering Herd discussing what positions will be decided during camp. <laughs> Talking to Charles Huff, Marshall Thundering Herd, head coach, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. All right, where are some positions that you do have some new players, that there are some going to be some battles going on here in camp? You know, I think we've done a really good job of recruiting both high school and the portal. Um, I feel really, really good about our linebacking group. You know, I think we've got a lot of talent and considerable amount there when you talk about the actual number of players on the field that actually are no longer there. Um, I feel like we have a lot of guys who have the ability to be the starter. This camp is going to be able to see who has the consistency um, to do that. Um, I think our secondary is probably our deepest um, you know, position as far as the amount of guys who have actually played in college games, um, deciding who actually goes out first, second, how many reps does this guy get? Um, the flexibility in our secondary is really good. I mean, we have guys who can play safety and corner or safety and nickel. Um, so those positions are going to be fun battles this, this, this camp to see who actually rises to the top. Um, also, I think we're a lot deeper on the offensive line, you know, which, mm. you know, it sounds great in August, but it only takes one, you know, banged up shoulder, one, you know, banged up knee. And now all of a sudden you got guys who you got to move around. But I do think what that allows us to do is going to allow us to practice better. Um, it's really hard to get good practice when you're practicing with your fourth O line and they're going against your ones or twos D line. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's just it's just Owen Porter going against a, a walk on freshman is not a good <laughs> conducive you know, plan for improving in practice. Um, but with that happening, with us having more depth at the O line, we're going to be able to have more practice, which means our D line is going to get quality reps, you know, whether they're the ones, sure. or twos or threes. Um, so I think what has happened over time is the depth on our team or the potential. Let me say that because they still got to play. We still got to go out and see who's, you know, who can do what. Um, the potential depth on our team is going to allow us to practice better, which is going to allow us to play better. And, and I think that's where a lot of improvement happens in practice. And it's hard to do that if you are superior to the person that you're consistently going against in practice. So we're going to be able to have better practices. We're going to be able to have more competition. We're going to be able to have more competitive practice. And that doesn't mean we'll tackle every day or anything like that. But regardless of who you line up against, you're going to have to have you bring your best. And if you can do that consistently, then Saturdays become easy. All right, a couple more questions for head coach of the Marshall Thundering Herd, Charles Huff. You know, we talk about this with a quarterback and, and maybe there's some other positions, you know, linebacker or even safety. Can you see when the game slows down? We we talked to Cam about that. He couldn't figure out a game where that maybe, you know, it clicked and it kind of slowed down. But you mentioned it's about media days. You know, he's getting the plays in right. He's calling the adjustments right. Something that something necessarily we're not going to be able to tell from the sidelines. But can you see when all of a sudden the light bulb goes off and these guys, oh, no, he got it, you know. Uh, can you see that? And how long how long does that take for you to see that they they sort of have clicked in whatever position they're playing? Yeah, I mean, it's no it's it's all different. Right. It's different for each guy. It's different sure. age position. Um, it's it's a lot easier to see in the intellectual positions than it is the physical positions. When I say that, meaning, you know, quarterback, um, DB, you know, I mean, the, the, the it's easier to see at the positions where the physicality is not the resounding theme, right? It's harder to see at O-line because a kid can be getting better. He can be getting his calls right. He can be understanding the plays and the angles, but he may physically still be getting outmatched. Um, The position like quarterback or safety, it's easier to see because there's a lot that goes on before the ball snaps that lets you know if the quarterback or if the safety Um, knows what's going on you know quarterback is probably the one that jumps out the most because you can ask them why did you throw the ball to that side of the field and their response can tell you if they were seeing the right things or at least looking at the right things safety you can kind of see well why were you in that alignment at that depth or why'd you make that call and their answers can can tell you if they were thinking the right things and once they start thinking the right things then usually the physical catches up at those positions you know, they usually start making the right decision with the ball. They usually start making the right calls in the back end. Um, so it, it varies by player. I, I would say last year for Cam, it probably happened 
um, right around the ODU game. You know, Mm -hmm. his first game was JMU, um, and you could tell there were some things that he was still kind of, you know, excited about. We'll say that. Uh, But the (laughs) ODU game, he really managed the game. You know, I think his best game was probably the Georgia Southern game. Um, you know, that game, he had a lot of feedback coming off the field. He had a lot of input. Um, there were a lot of things that he did, you know, just as simple as getting the guys to the line and letting the clock run down because we, we got to, we got to lead and, and knowing that, you know, Hey, letting eight to 10 more seconds take off the clock here is more important than, you know, whether we snap the ball right now. Um, you know, we, we did some things in that game, the Georgia Southern game that we necessarily hadn't practiced in that scenario that he was able to recall and say, okay, hey, this is what we're doing. And he's telling guys, hey, we didn't practice it at this yard line, but it's the same one we practice on the 50 at practice, you know you know what I mean? Right. So there were some things that you really kind of stepped back and said, wow, you know. Um, so, you know, that that's when you can kind of really see it. Um, obviously at practice every day, it's a little bit more um, controlled. So you, 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 you kind of control it to see it, you know, to make yourself feel good to make him feel good. Right. Um, but in those games, you could really see a difference. You could really see the light switch. You know, you look at the last play of the ODU game for us where he pulls in, he gets down the sideline for about a 40 yard run. Well, that was a situation where nine times out of 10, because of the mode we were in, you hand that ball off and you let the running back go get two and you punt it, you know, and you, you play good defense and win the game. Well, he was, we, we always talk about being intelligently aggressive. You know, he was intelligently aggressive at that point. You know, he realized what coverage they were in. He realized the person blitzing was the person that was responsible for him. So he made a decision. Um, and, and those, that's when you kind of said, okay, the kid's got it. Uh, right. Or at least he's right. getting it, you know, and, and that doesn't right. mean that he's done or he's reached the mark and he's ready to graduate. No. And he's done, but right. now you're able to put a little bit more on him. You're able to kind of curtail the game plan a little bit to more his liking. Um, we've had some safeties do the same thing, you know, started early in the year and they're biting on double moves or they're, you know, fitting too fast and getting the RPO throw behind them. And as the season goes on, they're holding their spot a little bit. You know, what I mean, they're fitting with a little bit more awareness to the RPO. Um, they're communicating a little bit better. Um, so th- those are the things that you usually can kind of see quicker than, you know, a left guard is, is does he know what he's doing? Well, the guy he's going against is 6'6", 320, and he's a senior. You know, it's pr- probably a little bit, you know, physical involved in that as well. All right, one more time out. When we come back, Coach Huff will talk about if he still gets excited on day one of camp and which running back of the really good ones that he had would he choose above the others? But first, we got to 400. We did it. I had a little bit of a bump uh, over the last couple of days, so really appreciate that. Everyone's feeling it. It is uh, football season. I think we're up to 407. I know that doesn't sound a lot compared to others, but that is literally that is over 100 in the month of July. So thank you so much. It's been fantastic, and we're on a race for 500. We need to get to 500 by Labor Day. Uh, and I'm asking for your help. That's they, It's blatant. I'm asking. We need your help to uh, get the subscriptions up to 500. Uh, so please, if you see it, tell your friends. You know, put it on your message boards. You're welcome to copy the link. Uh, and I will reply. Me, I'm the one replying to uh, all the comments. And we've had some good ones uh, as of recently, especially the ones for uh, where the Sun Belt should and or should not. Uh, expand to. So we really appreciate that. Still available wherever you get your audio podcasts, Amazon, iHeart, uh, Spotify, uh, and Apple Podcasts. Apple Podcasts and Spotify seem to be the two uh, big ones uh, these days around. So do appreciate it. Thank you so much. And we'll continue with these previews with the coaches and the media for the next month. It's going to be the easiest, probably the easiest month uh, to, to, uh, to do lockdown, maybe even some bonus episodes uh, throughout because we got to get to uh, all the teams, both media wise and the team wise. So uh, that is uh, my math. Uh, my understanding is that there, there would be no math, but that would be 28 episodes easy. Uh, all right, let's get back to it. Charles Huff, coach of the Marshall Thundering Herd, on how he still enjoys uh, the first day of camp and excited for that. And which of his outstanding running backs would he choose? 
All right, two more questions for Marshall Thundering Herd coach Charles Huff. Uh, all right, I've been doing this a while. I still get a kick out of it. I know people at SEC Media Days were, you know, a little jaded, a little bit better at Sunbelt Media Days because we get to talk to everybody. We're not chasing the coaches down. You guys are coming to us. And I, I get, I, you know, honestly, I get a kick out of you. You always got a big smile. Uh, you're very easy to talk to. You give us some great detail. So I get a kick out of this. You still get, and camp is opening up, I presume, on Wednesday when it seems to be opening up for everybody. You still get nervous? You still get excited? On the first day, on the first day of camp, you just hand out the syllabus and let the guys go early, or is it a full practice? <laughs> no, no, I I still get excited. I get excited for the opportunity to get better. You know, I, I wouldn't call it nervous. Um, you know, people have asked me, do you get nervous before a game? I, I don't really get nervous. I get in kind of check mode. You know, making sure that we've done everything we could possibly do to give these guys a chance to be successful. And and running through your head. Did we do everything on Monday? Did we do everything on Tuesday? You know, have I managed the reps the right way? Have I managed the rotations the right way? Have I managed the coaches the right way? Did we do enough in recruiting this week to stay on top of that? That That's kind of the nervousness I get, not, oh my God, I wonder if they're going to play good, you know, or, oh my God, I wonder if this other team is going to be good. It's just more, hey, have we done everything that we could possibly do this week to give them the best chance? So I still get excited at the beginning of the camp because to me, it, you know, one, all the summer work, all of the off-season work, all of the planning. Okay, now we get a chance to go, you know, and, and it's kind of like first day back to school, man. You know, you get to see your guys, you get to see your players, you get on the field, uh, you know, you get out of these rules where you can and you can't do some stuff in the summer, and you can get just the football. And, and that's what I signed up for, and that's the part that I love. Um, and then you get to see, you know, 125 or how many ever kids you have in camp. You get to see them, you know, hit the field with bright eyes and bushy tail. Nobody's missed a tackle. Nobody's lost a game. Nobody hasn't performed well. And you get to see the youthfulness in the game of football. And with all that's going on in college football, um, sometimes you, you miss that, the, the youthfulness, the, the buzz, the excitement just to play the game. You know, transfer portal, NIL, and conference realignment, TV deals, and all of that stuff is great. And I understand that's the business of it. But they're still at the core seeing the joy on kids' faces when they just get to play the game. And that's what you get on the first day of camp. All right, let's wrap it up with Marshall Thundering Herd head coach Charles Huff. You can only pick one running back. And we got, let's see here, who have you coached? You've coached Saquon Barkley. You have coached Naze Harris. And you got Rasheen Ali. Who are you going with, coach? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I would I would say all, all three of those guys are uniquely talented on and off the field in their own rights. Um, obviously, you know, my time, you know, with with all three of those guys has been phenomenal. Um, I, I would say this. Um, I would lean to experience and I would lean to just like I do with who plays and who both guys are. I'm going to lean to experience my time with Saquon was probably the longest. So I have, you know, obviously um, a deeper or a longevity connection. You know, I think Ali has the opportunity to be as good, if not better than all three of those guys. Our time is still growing and he's still developing. So we are still developing um, my time with Najee Harris. Uh, when I got there, he was already into two of his years. So, um, we kind of, you know, jumped in kind of like stepdad and, hey, I'm going to carry you through, through the rest. And I think we had an unbelievable relationship. I think I helped him. He helped me um, a lot. Um, but being that I was able to recruit Saquon in high school, you know, went through getting him, you know, eligible, helping him understand the importance of academics, really got a chance to, you know, spend time, eat dinner with his family, you know, saw what his family went through to get him there, obviously coaching him you know, all four years or all three years that he was in college and still having um, the connection with him. My son's middle name is Barkley um, oh, wow. after him, um, not because I think he's going to grow up to be a great running back, just because at the time in my career that I met Saquon, we were both in a very similar scenario. No one really knew who Charles Huff was. You know, I'd been grinding and working my tail off, you know, to try and, you know, become a better coach and a better person. Um, and because of his success, it ultimately created value for me. And I think that's what coaching is really about. How can everyone involved create value for themselves? So I, I would say Saquon would be the one just because of how our relationship and the longevity of our relationship. But 
if you ask me from a athletic standpoint, we'd be on here another three or four hours because it, it, it would take a lot. Um, so take everything athletically out of it. Um, I would pick Saquon just because of, you know, the, the, what we were able to do together, um, if that makes sense. But if you talk football, I don't know if you got enough um, time on your podcast to really well, for me to choose. Yeah, N- Najee Harris may have had one of the quietest 30 touchdown seasons for a running back in history in 2020. Kind of got overshadowed by Devontae Smith, uh, Jalen Waddle for a little bit, and Mac Jones, and he was <clears throat> and he in, the, in a COVID season. So he was uh, spectacular. He is Charles Huff. Uh, really appreciate your time on the podcast. Uh, best of luck this season. <clears throat> have a great camp. And um, as, as we say in, in my tribe, Mazel tough on the uh, on the upcoming child, and uh, we'll talk to you again sometime during the season. Really appreciate your time, Coach. Thanks for hopping on Locked On Sunbelt. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you having me on, and go Herd.